Hello everyone, this is Marco and as you can see, I'm speaking to you from the beautiful Shanghai. Or am I? Because to the YouTube servers, this video was uploaded from Korea. Why? Why is that? Why? Censorship is not the correct word to describe the firewall's purpose. A much better word is protection. The Arab Spring was fueled by Western powers. So-called Twitter revolutions were channeled via the internet and social media. What's happening in Iran has been dubbed a Twitter revolution and has now got the attention of the Pentagon. The subgrants are trying to understand how 140 characters might be enough to change the world. And I am betting on this new trend of revolutions, uh, hashtag revolutions, if we, can, if we can name it, that are sweeping across the region. The US publicly states that it has committed more than $1.4 billion to support Tunisia's transition towards democratic practices and good governance. In a major speech on internet freedom, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said the US will provide more help for internet users worldwide to get around filters and get their message out. We have uh, our ear to the ground talking to digital activists about where they need help and our diversified approach means we're able to adapt to the range of threats that they face. We support multiple tools. So if repressive governments figure out how to target one, others are available. In the last three years, the State Department has awarded more than $20 million in grants to activists working at what she calls the cutting edge of the fight against... Looking back from now, the results are a stagnating GDP and higher unemployment rate than before. Even worse cases are Libya and Syria, which fell into civil war. All this turmoil also gave birth to ISIS, an extremely violent terrorist organization. China saw this very early on and said, Stop right there! The Chinese internet space will not become a place filled with Western ideals, hence the intention of the Great Firewall. The biggest misconception about the firewall is that it's an information curtain that makes life in China like George Orwell's 1984. People have the common understanding that state blockage creates isolated communities on the internet, assuming that netizens would use all websites if given access. But they forget the sheer size of the Chinese market. With local companies quickly filling the digital gap, often more adequately and effectively. One study about the Chinese internet from the University of Missouri found that cultural proximity plays a much bigger role than access blockage. This means that even with access to the outside internet, the vast majority of Chinese people aren't likely to use Google services anytime soon because equivalent Chinese companies can deliver much more fitting services. The Chinese internet is exploding with its own topics, news, events, scandals or memes or what have you. More importantly, in the age of artificial intelligence where data mining is crucial, obtaining first-hand raw data is extremely important. Europe, where there is already a lack of tech companies, suddenly realize that they don't own the data to train their AI and develop algorithms. They've been using Google and Facebook services all this time, and all of the user data are in the hands of American companies. Now, because China was late to the internet party of which the US holds definite influence, China built its wall early on. This prevented potential incidents of the likes of the Arab Spring and terrorist attacks. On the side, Chinese internet companies have grown and many of them are now major global players in social media platforms. In the case of WeChat and TikTok, these now have the US worried, planning on banning the two apps and rolling out the Clean Network program. Mateo announced the expansion of the Clean Network by launching five new clean initiatives. The first is Clean Carrier which will ensure untrusted Chinese carriers are not connected with U.S. telco networks, preventing them from hijacking our sense of information or even shutting them down.
Similar programs have been implemented in other parts of the world. Russia with its RUNET, India straight out shutting down the internet, and even Europe, after years of lacking behind the internet slash tech sector, stating that they might need a wall just like China's. But what sounds like an more and more nations around the world are starting to consider internet space as sovereign space and fertile soil for infant industries. The internet freedom that the West is advocating may actually be destructive for local internet cultures, especially with monopolies as big as Google. The Great Firewall is a protective measure at its core, but also allows Chinese culture and big data to independently flourish. In this case, walls are providing a safe environment for innovation and prevent global homogeneity. Post-production Marco here again. You know, with the growing influence of the Chinese internet, I'm going to make a prediction that over the next five to ten years, we're going to see China slowly but not completely tear down its firewall and other nations start to build their own version of a firewall. And I don't see this as necessarily good or bad. Maybe a lot of new tech companies will spawn as a result. Um, I see this as the inevitable future direction of the internet. And anyways, if you enjoyed this video, do remember to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.